Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I am Darren, of course, and today I'm going to do something really special. I'm going to make some baby back ribs on the M36 from M Grills. We're going to use it as a charcoal smoker and we're going to use the Thermoworks signals with the bellows temp controller and I've got some other adapters and stuff to go with it. But we're going to make these ribs as an Asian type of flavoring with Qunami from Lane's Barbecue and the Japanese barbecue sauce to glaze it up. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. All right, guys, first of all, I want to go over the, uh, the uh, signals from Thermoworks. This is their uh, four probe barbecue thermometer. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. So one of the things you can do, one of the things you can do with this particular unit is you can add the Billows fan that Thermoworks also carries and you can turn this into a complete temperature controller. So the, the signals itself, you can use just as a, a monitoring device for your food and your smoker. But with the billows attachment, you can also control the temperature of your smoker. We're gonna set this up so that um, we can do that when we cook these ribs. So the billows itself needs an adapter. I have one here that I'm gonna use that I know will work on my M36. And it just kind of goes right in the hole that uh, is in the M36 for the uh, temperature controllers. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to hook that up. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and get my ribs prepped. We'll get the fire going in the M36 and we'll get this billows and the uh, Thermoworks signals all set up. But first let me get the ribs prepped. I'll be right back. All right guys, I'm going to go ahead and prep my uh, ribs here real quick. Uh, I haven't even cracked this rub open yet. So it'll be my first time trying it out. But I've already removed the membrane from the back of these baby backs, so um, you can leave it on or you can take it off. I prefer to take it off just because I don't like biting into that. And um, this will actually, if you remove the membrane, it will let some of that rub penetrate into that meat on the back side of the rib. Um, we're going to let these sit for about an hour or so, so they're going to kind of dry brine a little bit. Um, you can put mustard on your ribs if you want. I don't. I usually just spritz a little water. You can use some um, apple cider vinegar or apple juice or whatever you prefer. Um, people use different things, but mustard's not not something I use. Uh, it doesn't add any flavor to the ribs, and it doesn't um, really add any texture or anything that I, I've ever known, and it's a waste of mustard. I just add a little bit of moisture just so the rub will stick a little bit better, and then I'm going to put a good amount of this rub. This is Qunami from Lane's Barbecue in Georgia. Just a good amount on both sides. I season both sides in my racks. Some people only season one side, but I make sure to get as much rub on here as I can. And that's it guys we're going to put it on both sides i'm not going to bore you with that then we're going to let them sit here for a while then i'm going to go get my charcoal started on my m36 mother of all grills from m grills i'll be right back all right guys i'm going to show you how i'm going to set up the vent uh, in the fan here in the vent door so there's a little hole right under the uh, lever for the vents that uh, you take out and put back in if you're not using the, uh, the temp controller and the adapter fits right into that hole. You also want to make sure you close your vents all the way when you're using the temp controller because you want the temp controller to uh, control all the air going into the fire pit. So put your adapter on the billows unit and it slides right into that hole and that's controlling all the air that's going into your firebox now. So we're going to go ahead and hook up the uh, billows fan to the Thermoworks signals. It comes with a little adapter. You plug your fan into one side, the power into another, 
and then this uh, other cable goes right into your signals and then it controls the uh, amount of airflow that goes through your smoker to control the temperature. So when you're setting up your signals, I got my food probe in channel number one, but when you use your fan with it, it's uh, always going to be channel four and it's going to you set your temperature and all that. So now we're going to get our fire going. I'm going to use my grill gun to get a fire going right in the middle of the charcoal pile. And just uh, for about a minute or so to get that going nice and good. Then we're going to put our pecan and cherry wood all around it so we get a nice slow burn when that starts kicking in. Got the pit up to about 220 and we're going to go ahead and put our ribs on and it should even out in the next 10 or 15 minutes and we'll be ready to cook. All right, I'll see you. All right guys, so we're sitting here right, this analog thermometer says we're just over 250. We're at 253, 254 here. And let me tell you what I had to do. The little damper needed to come off of the billows just because of the size of this smoker, it needed to have that full open fan to get it up to the 250 range. And I had to put a little piece of high heat tape on there just to hold it in place because when the uh, door started heating up, the metal expanded and the hole got a little bit, just a little bit bigger where it was making so that didn't sit in there tight enough. So I had some of this high heat tape just put a little piece on there to hold it in place so it didn't fall out. Um, so, but that's not a big deal. I could probably get uh, another adapter or something or rig the adapter next time to where it stays in there no matter when the heat expands the metal or not. So, just to let you know, that's what happened. So, you learn something new when you're playing with a new smoker and a new temp control system. But now it's sitting right where I want it. I did put a probe in the ribs. I don't know how accurate that is because when you temp ribs with a probe like that, you just never know where you're getting the reading from. So, but I'm going to make sure I hit them with an instant read. So it should be on here in a couple hours. I'll take them off or after a couple hours, I'll go ahead and probe them again and see where we're at. But now I got a constant, consistent temperature. I'll be back. All right, guys, just showing you here the app from the uh, Thermoworks using the billows and the signals here. It's got the internal temperature of the ribs and the temperature of the pit. It's hanging pretty steady there around the 255 range. All right, I'll be back. All right, guys, the uh, internal probe uh, that I got in there for the ribs, it's just over 180. And what I'm going to do is take these off and we're going to baste them with that Japanese barbecue sauce and then I crank the heat up too because I want these to glaze over pretty good. So I got the temp going up to about 350 or so and then we're gonna let these finish up. But let me get them off real quick and we'll baste that right, guy. So these are looking pretty nice. They got some nice color to them. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna shake up this Japanese barbecue sauce from Batchins. Batchins. They smell good with this Kunami on there from Lane's, for sure. I'm going to shake this up really, really good. It's very watery, from what I can tell. So it's not like a really thick Kansas City-style barbecue sauce. So I'm going to just pour it on here, and then I'm going to hit it with a basting brush, just to make sure it gets all over there really good. All right, guys, I'm going to put these back in, and I'll see you in a few. All right, guys, these are done. Check that out. Bakken's Japanese barbecue sauce, uh, Lane's barbecue Q-Nami. Mm -mm -mm. Nice and thick barbecue baby back ribs. I'm going to go ahead and cut, cut a piece off here. Let me find that. 
backbone. I usually cut these from the back. It makes it easier to find the bone. There we go, nice smoke ring. Let me cut another one off. Just so we can do a nice presentation there. Check that out. Nice smoke ring, that's for sure. Yep, wow. Awesome smoke ring. So they're done, that's for sure. Um, look really good, got a nice bark to them. They're still really hot. Just came off the uh, M36, so good hit of that. Look at that, awesome. Perfectly done, pulled away from the bone, but not falling off. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Totally different flavors, guys, than normally. Um, no heavy ketchup-based uh, barbecue sauce or tomato-based. Kind of a soy teriyaki mix, but awesome. Can't wait to uh, get these in and feed them to my family. But check it out, guys. Check out check out the Bakken's Japanese barbecue sauce and the Kunami uh, Asian-style barbecue rub from Lane's. And check out the M36 and check out the Fire & Water Cooking channel. I'll see you again in the next Fire & Water Cooking video. Thanks, guys.